people don't still don't know what each assignment covers, which study units, and people still don't know where to find the information. And I thought uh, before we start the session, I just want to share with you where you can find all the other information in case people are also still not aware of where everything is at. I just want to change, switch the role to a student so that then you can see what <coughs> you will be seeing. So this is the, once you, you log in onto the system, you will have multiple modules here um, as per your registration modules that you have registered. If you register 10 modules and all 10 of them have e-tutoring and they also, you will have your lecture site and then you will have your e-twitter site. So your e-twitter site will always have a, a, a number and an e at the end to show you that this is an e-twitter site. And your lecture um, site will just show the module number, the year, and um, if it's semester, it will have an S there, and then uh, that will be your lecture site. So to know what information is required for you to complete your assignment. It is under the information. It's yeah. Uh, if you go to announcement, I, I think I am not sure. Uh, announcement, there is assignment availability and due date. If you click on that, there is a PDF document that you can download and you will it will tell you because all information is there. When is the assignment open and when it's going to be due? Uh, these dates are old. Um, these are old dates. You will have to check on the assignment thing. But what is important is what assignment number relates to what study unit. You can see that assignment two relates to study unit um, four and five. Um, Assignment three, which will be coming soon, will uh, in, in 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 it will be open for July. It will <clears throat> it will be study unit six and seven and so on. The dates will change. Um, you will just I will just need to check with your lecturer again to update the the document so that you can have the correct date. Um, the other thing that you need to do is always check your your announcement. Don't ask other people. Don't rely on hearsays because the hearsays sometimes don't work well because we try. We sometimes exaggerate when we explain things to people. So come to your lecture site and look at the announcement and look at the dates because the announcement are dates then. So you can see there is the announcement on assignment two. It tells you what exactly is going to be happening so you are aware of when the assignment will be open and when it's due, um, uh, when is the, the, the closing date of that assignment, because this was shared and you would have received this in your email as well. But not only this, the material, the prescribed book information, everything is included here and you will be able to see your assessment or your assignment. Your assignments are called assessments so you would have done your assignment one. There is the assignment two. It will only be up for me. I'm able to see this. I'm not sure if you are able to see it, uh, but you can see there it's all the information. It's not yet available, but there were some dates loaded on there. But don't worry about that. You had the announcement uh, that explains everything. Um, so you need to be able to come to this and look at everything that is happening with regards to your module. With regards to our e-tutorials, as myself, as your e-tutor, we do have our own site. So you, you remember, you will click on the one that says E1, which will be our site. <clears throat> what I want to alert you to is always um, the announcements you always get in your email as well, depending on how you structured, how you receive notifications. Uh, but the announcement, I don't always post announcements here. It's easy for me to do it in the WhatsApp, but you can always come here 
on some weeks I will also post some announcements here if I want everyone to be aware of what is happening, if it's very, very important. The additional resources, uh, this summary note, you have all the notes from study unit one up until study unit 11 as per your content. This note relates to, I'm gonna show you now, videos of content or related content. So you can use this study uh, notes to follow what is happening on those videos. Uh, I'm not gonna touch the template. The weekly session notes, these are the sessions that we have today. These are our weekly sessions. So those sessions, um, today's session we do, we're do dealing with Poison. There is the um, notes that we're going to be using for today. For your assignment two, uh, you will have to use uh, study unit four, session three, session four, study unit five, session four, and study unit five, session five, and study unit session six. Next week, we will have another session, which will be just the question and answer session of study unit four, five, and six combined. Oh, sorry, study unit five, four, and five combined. So I will find more questions that we can use um, to explain certain things as well for our question and answer session. But here is where you will find the notes. Okay, so those are under additional resources. Then there is this side, the folders called e-tutorial and contents. If you click on it, there are your study units. So it goes study unit one up until study unit five. So you will only be interested in those two study units. You just need to go through each one of them. Each study unit, I'm gonna go to the one that we are on, which is this one. When you open, you will get a recording which describes uh, your discrete probabilities in detail and how you can calculate it and so forth and so forth. Then you just go to the next page. You will get some quizzes where you are able to practice more and continue practicing. I think there are about three or four questions. And then once you're done with the activities, you can go to the next. It will lead you to the next session, uh, which will be I'm not sure now where I'm at. I clicked on the wrong thing. So once you <clears throat> once you are done, it's once you're done with all the activities, you will get to uh, study unit five. Also, you will find a recording that deals with binomial and Poisson. Um, and then you just click on the next button, and then you will do some activities relating to those two. Um, sections and then that will be it. You will be done with um, with preparing for Sunday work. Then on Sunday we have the question and answer session where we do the activities like today we're going to get there. Um, after Sunday you will go to the Sunday and get the recordings for all the online sessions. They are under online there you will be able to see all the weekly sessions that we had and you will just follow in terms of study units. So if you missed any of the session, you can go to the date of that session and watch the recordings. So you just watch the recordings one after the other until you are done and then you start doing your assignment. That's all what I wanted to get your attention to. If you want to know where to join the session, you go to your calendar. There are the sessions already preloaded onto the system. You can just click on them. There is the link to join. Or under the announcements, under the announcements, there is one way I, uh, it might be, you will have to, <laughs> You will have to go and find the, the correct announcement, but it's one of those announcements where it's a weekly announcement. Probably it is this one. Uh, online sessions. Uh, I'm not sure if this has the link to attending the session, but the, 
the the links are always attached as you can see i always attach links to certain things um on here so you should be able to find the link to attend the session as easy as like that okay so that's all what i wanted to share with you for for now before we start with this week's session so let's start with this week's session so today we're going to be doing poison distribution likewise before i start are there any question um is there any question or clarity that you seek theory that you have if none can the person who hasn't muted themselves please mute yourself there is that music playing in your background always remember if there is music playing in your background please keep your 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 mic muted uh, because uh when we post the recordings if there is uh music playing in the background sometimes youtube doesn't like it because of copyright and we will have to cut it so imagine if we were doing some activities and your music is playing in the background it means the chunk of that activity will be cut off and they, you are disadvantaging other students from learning so please be mindful of that either ask the people to mute or to reduce the volume or just, just don't ask anything use the chat forum to communicate with us okay in the absence of any questions so we can start with the poison so by the end of the session today you should learn the properties of a poison probability distribution to be able to calculate the mean the variance and the standard deviation of a poison and you should be able to find the probability or calculate the probability of a poison distribution. Now, like with the last time, um, poison is part of a probability distribution and it is part of chapter five or study unit five. It's part of the discrete probability distribution. We have dealt with the properties. We've dealt with the binomial. We are going to be doing the poison. You don't have to worry about the other part of discrete probabilities, not part of your syllabus. And then going forward uh, for your assignment three, you will deal with continuous distribution. OK, so. What is a poison distribution? and what do we use it for so we use poison distribution when we are interested in the number of times an event is happening in a given area of an opportunity how we define an area of an opportunity it is a continuous unit or an interval of time volume or such an area in which more than one occurrences of an event can okay and this can be the number of scratches in a car paint the number of mosquito bites on a person the number of computer crashes in a day we apply poison distribution when you wish to count the number of times an event occurs in a given area of an opportunity the and we can calculate the probability that an event occurs in that one area of an op opportunity and it will also fall um, in the same areas for all the other areas of, of an opportunities. And you will see when we do some activities as well. The number of events that occurs in one area of an opportunity needs to be independent of the other number of events that occurs in the same other areas of uh, opportunities, because this <clears throat> It's a random variable. It needs to be independent for us to use it. So one event cannot influence the other event or cannot affect the other event. The probability that two or more events occurs in the area of an opportunity approaches zero as the area of an opportunity becomes smaller and smaller. And you will see when we go to the tables, um, the the by uh, poison 
distribution tables, you will see that the, the probabilities of those um, uh, events that are happening will become smaller as the, um, the events increases as well. The <clears throat> average number of events per unit are always resembled or denoted by a lambda or that symbol that you see there. That is a lambda that talks to the average or it talks to the expected number of events that we will use for the Poisson distribution. So some of the properties of a Poisson distribution is that we need to be able to calculate the mean. We know that the mean is denoted by the lambda, which is that lambda uh, sign we saw from the beginning. Uh, this is the mean. This is also called the expected value. Expected. The expected value or the mean or the average. Or the average. And the variance which is the sigma squared of uh, our poison is also the same as your expected. So we can also call this the variance because it's the same as your expected uh, value. The standard deviation, however, it is the square root of your variance. So therefore, the standard deviation will just be the square root of your expected value or your variance. So with Poisson, it's easy because you will be given the expected value. So you, you should be able to find what is the mean, the, uh, the variance, and you should be able to calculate the standard deviation of that expected number of events. Let's look at this example. If this they tell us that a local police station receives on an average 3.5 emergency calls per hour. This calls follows a poison distribution. And the question says, find the mean of this question. So we know the mean will be equals to 3.5. And the variance will be because the variance is the same as your expected number of events, which will be equals to 3.5 because we know that our expected number of events is the same as your average is the same as your mean it's 3.5 the standard deviation which is the square root of 3.5 which will give us the answer of the square root of 3.5 is equals to 1.87. 1.87. That's as easy as it is in order to work with the poison. So if they ask you to calculate or find the mean, the variance, they are all the same. They are equal. They are 3.5. And the standard deviation will be the square root of the variance, which is the square root of 3.5. Suppose that the number of daily fake news posts is poison distributed with the mean of 0 0.2. This is your exercise. What is the value of your mean and the standard deviation of the number of daily fake news posts? I'm going to give you one minute to think about this and one minute to answer this question. We don't have to wait long. If you know the answer already, you can let us know what is the mean, what is the standard deviation. Number one. Okay, so we say it's number one. So we know that the mean is the same as our lambda and our mean is the same as that. This is our lambda, therefore our mean is 0 0.2. And the next question they asked to calculate the standard deviation and our standard deviation, oh, sorry, our standard deviation is the square root of our lambda, which is the square root of 0, 0,2. And the square root of 0, 0,2 
end of point two is equal to zero point four five. I'm gonna just leave it to four. Zero point four. Zero point four. And that will be just number number one. That was easy, right? Mm-hmm. Now calculating the probability, we need to know how to calculate the probability using the formula. And the formula is like that. Finding the probability of an X of an event where you are given the average of a number of events is given by E, which is the exponent, uh, the exponent, uh, which we also call it the base of the natural logarithm system. Don't use this number on your calculator. You do have the E. Um, on your calculator, it's e to the power of x on some calculators. Let me see on the Casio. On a Casio, it is the e is written in orange. It will be that one where you will have to press the um, the shift first and then press the lean. And that is the e that you will use to calculate the uh, exponential e to the power of a negative lambda. times lambda to the power of x divided by x factorial, where x is number of events and lambda is your expected number of events. How do we then calculate this? You need, to, whether we're going to use the table or not, you need to be able to know how to calculate or at least substitute the values onto the, uh, the formula and do some calculations. So find the probability that x is equal to two Given that uh, your number of events or your mean or your expected value is 0, 0,5. So we know our x is 2, our lambda is 0, 0,5. We go to the formula and we substitute. We substitute our lambda, 0, 0,5. We substitute our lambda, 0, 0,5. Substitute x, x is 2. So it will be e to the power negative 0, 0,5 times 0 0.5 to the power of 2 divided by x factorial, which is 2 factorial. And when you calculate the entire value, you get 0 0,0758. And that's when you are calculating manually. Same, same, same. If you were asked to find the probability of a greater than, you will have to calculate this same formula for multiple of those greater than values that you are calculating and then adding them all up. We'll get to that exercises and we'll see how we apply that. Using a table, so you do have a Poisson table and the Poisson table is divided by the lambdas as compared to the binomial table that is divided by the n values. This one is divided by your lambdas. Your lambdas are always at the top of the table and each lambda values or each lambda values for each table corresponds with the number of x values and we'll look at the table just now the actual table so answering the same question that we have here we look for the lambda table that has a 0 0.5 and we know that we're looking for x is equal to 2 we go to where x is 2 and where they both meet sorry where they both meet, that will be the probability that we're looking for. And you can see that whether you use the formula or you use the table, you will get the same answer. Let's look at the table, the actual table. So this is the table, this table E7 that you're going to be using to answer any of the questions that we're going to be doing just now. So this table, it's split up by the lambdas. As you can see, like as I explained, the tables are broken down by the number of lambdas. So this first one, it's from lambda is 0 0.1 till uh, lambda of one. And you can see that it ends at seven. As it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the probabilities become zeros. Um, 
if you add the sum of all these probabilities should also be equals to one. So you should be able to calculate the probability of equal, the probability of at least, the probability of less than on this table. Now, as you go with the lambdas, you will see that the X values increases with the table. As well, you will see for the lambda 2.1 to 3, the table has 12 X values. For 3.1 to 4, the table has 14 X values and like that, it will go on, on and on and on and on and on. I'm not going to show you the entire table, but at least you have an idea. So this is very important because if they have given you and they say the average is equals to 0 0.9 and they say find that the probability of X is greater than is greater than 4. When they say it's greater than 4, therefore it means you need to add all these values of X. Then you will go to where it is 0 0.4 and 0 0.9, which is at this point, you will have to add all these probabilities together. And if they said it is the probability of X less than 4, then you will have to add all those other probabilities at the top. Similar, if your lambda was 1.9, if your lambda was 1.9, then you will come to 1.9. And if it said uh, it's less than or it's greater than 4, greater than 4 will be from here. Oh, sorry. I did it all wrong because greater than 4 means you only add from, from 5. You don't add four. So you only add those ones. So greater than greater than four does not include four. So you exclude four. So it means you're going to add all those values there. So you just need to be very careful when you read your averages. You need to go to the exact table that you are using. Okay, remember always when we calculate the probabilities, even for the poison, we also are going to be given the weight problem sometimes. We need to be able to uh, convert the weight phrases in, into a mathematical um, symbol so that we can answer the question whether we want to calculate the greater than or equal or greater than or less than or equal or between and so forth and so forth. So this is very important as well. So let's look at an example. A local police station receives on average 3.5 emergency calls per hour. These calls are poison distributed. What is the probability that the station will get six calls? So because this is what is the probability that they will get? It is exactly. So therefore, we need to find the probability that X is equal to 6. So we can use the function or the, the formula, which is the probability of E to the power of minus lambda times lambda to the power of X divided by X factorial, which we then substitute and say E to the power of negative our lambda is 3.5, 3.5 times our 3.5 lambda to the power of 6, because our x is 6, divided by 6 factorial. And we can go to our calculator and start calculating. Okay. Our shift, shift. E minus 3.5. Don't forget to put the 3.5. And I need to go down. And by using my arrow, multiply by, and I can put the bracket actually instead of putting multiply by. Multiply by 3.5 times 
close bracket, then I do to the power of six. And I'm going to do equal because I didn't do the fraction button. Equal divide by and I'm going to divide by my factorial, which is six. And where is the factorial? It is on that shift. Factorial equals. And the answer I get when I calculate is 0, 0,0771. 0, uh, 0,0771. Now let's go and do, use the same and look at if we use the table. So our lambda is 3.5. So we're going to go to the table 3.5. And that is our table. I can make it bigger so that you are able to see. 3.5 is our table, and we're looking for x of 6, where they both meet. And there is our probability. So you can either use a table or use the formula to calculate. Okay. What is the probability that the station will get at most? What is at most? What is at most? Uh, at most means uh, less than is the less than uh, equal to. At most, certainly, it's less than or equals to four calls. Therefore, it means we need to find the probability that x is equals to zero, plus the probability that x is equals to one plus the probability that x is equals to 2, plus the probability that x is equals to 3, plus the probability that x is equals to 4. So go ahead and use the formula. It will take us forever. So for quick use of the table will give us the answer quickly. We still are on 3.5. So all we need is all the values from four and above and below. It's all those values. So we can write them because when I toggle between the two screens, it will be distracting. Uh, just write the values so you can give them to me when I go back to the slide. Let me know when we're done. At least one person. Done. You have all the values. Okay. Yes. Right. So I'm going to go back to the slide. So where the probability of X is zero, you can just give me the values. It's zero point. Zero three oh two. Plus where X is one. 0, 0,1057. 0, 0,1057. 57. For 2. 0, 0,1850. 0, 0, okay. For 3. 0, 0,2158. And for four, zero comma one eight eight eight. And then Two. take your calculator and add all of them. Zero comma seven two double five. Zero comma double two seven two. Uh, seven two seven two. Yes. Wait, come again, zero comma seven two 
double five. Double five. And that is the probability that the station will get at most four calls per hour. Okay. You get the you get it. Happiness? Are we good or are we great? Good. So far, you have learned the properties of a, by a Poisson uh, probability distribution. You know now how to calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of a Poisson distribution. And you now also are able to know that you can calculate the probability of a Poisson distribution by either using the formula or by using the table. So now let's do some more exercises for practice. How do I get rid of this thing? There you go. Let's go. The number of power outages at a nuclear power plant has a Poisson distribution with a mean of outage of six outages per year. So we know that is our average. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So you need to go to your table and answer the following questions. So we can do it together. This the first question, we will do them together and then you will go and I will give you more time to do them on your own as we go along. The probability that there will be no outages, it means we need to be finding the probability that X is equals to zero, right? because zero will represent no outages in that hour. So we go to six. So you will need to go to the table with the average six, and there is our average of six. Average of six and X is zero. And the probability is 0,025. And they, okay, so on this table, they used a table that has five decimals. Um, so it will still be 0, 0,25. And the table that I'm using has four decimals. So it's rounded off. And that's what you might also. I get if you are using a prescribed test book sometime, it might have five decimals. If you are using the study guide, it might have the same tables as I have. If you're getting from another or internet or somewhere, it might be four decimal or five decimal. So you just need, when you go write the exam, they will give you the table. Or they will, yeah, probably they will give you the tables that you will use. So you won't have this mismatch of information as well. So that is the same. So that is correct. The probability that there will be at least, what is at least? At least one. That will be the probability that X is greater than or equals to one. Zero. That can also be one minus the probability that X is equals to zero, or you can do, you can say is the same as, because it says at least one, you will go and find the probability that X is equals to one, plus the probability that X is equals to two, plus the probability that X is equals to three, plus all of them. So let's go back to the table. We're still using the same table because all the information is related to six. So you will come here and you will add all these values there. Instead of adding all the values, we can just take the probability of a complement of all the values, which is the probability of X is equals to zero, which we know that now that it was one minus zero comma zero. 
zero to five and that will be equals to that will be equals to one minus point zero zero two five is equals to zero comma nine nine seven which is the correct one that is there zero comma nine nine seven five which means that is correct if you have any question or you don't understand what i'm doing yeah please stop me and ask why am i doing this or that so that we are able to clarify things but you do understand why i'm doing it this way right okay no answer the probability that there will be more than one outages what is that they are asking you to find the probability that x is greater than one so now this is different to the previous one because the previous one said it is at least so this one will be one minus the sum of the probabilities of x is equals to zero plus the probability that x is equals to one because it has to be for both of them because it says more than one so more than one means coming to more than one will mean all these other values except those two so in order for me to not add all these values because it's gonna take me forever to add uh values from two up until 17 i'll rather add those two and subtract them from one because those will be the complement of all of them so that will be I'll just add those two, 0 0.025 plus 0 0.0149. 0 0.025 plus 0 0.0149, I think. Forgot to subtract them from one. One minus. And the answer is. Do you have the answer? Zero comma nine eight two six. Zero. That's zero. after saying one minus answer. Yeah. Zero comma nine eight. Nine eight six. You let me hang in six. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so therefore, that will be the incorrect one. But we, for the purpose of practicing, we continue. The standard deviation of the number of power outages is two point four five. So we know what the So we take the square root of six. What is the square root of six? The square root of four. Yeah, 2.45. 2.45, 2 so that will be correct. The number of power outages has the mean of three. That is correct because uh, we were given six for a year. So semester, we're just going to divide by two. Okay. There you go. Thank you, because I didn't read the entire sentence. And that is correct. Okay. So those are how you're going to, or oh, this is how you will answer the questions when you get them from your assignment or the exam as well. So, you, are, you can be given questions to calculate the probability or calculate the standard deviation or the mean and so on. Okay. 
let's look at the next one. So this one also, you can do it yourself. Suppose that the number of daily fake news is poison distributed with the mean, but I think we did this. Oh, sorry, we did that. Uh, we found that it was number two. Sorry, I used it in the exercise. We can skip number two because we did find this was the square root of 0, 0,2, which is 0, 0,4. The average number of adults with ASD consulting with a neuropsychologist per day is poison distributed with an average or the mean of 1.5. So that is your lambda. What is the probability that on any given day, a neuropsychologist will consult with only one adult. Now, therefore, you need to find the probability that X is equals to one. You can either use the formula or use the table. And because you will be using the process of elimination, you will first go and find that on the table. So let's go to the table. 1.5, right? Yes. To 1.5. 1.5. There is 1.5. And we want X is 1. So X is 1. And the answer is 0 0.3347, right? The answer yes. is 0, 3347. None of them, none of this, none of this, none of this. So we are left with only two. Can mm -hmm. we select number five? I no, need more information to calculate the probability. Not necessarily because we do have all the other information and we did find the probability there. So that won't work. But we cannot assume that this is not the correct answer as well. Or this is the correct answer. Let's use our formula. So looking at this, the way they have it, I can just write the formula. X is I got one. number four. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I calculated number four. I got it. It's correct. Yeah, I'm just we do it number four. So they here is the formula I introduced to you. You can rewrite this formula as lambda x e to the power negative lambda over x factorial. So let's substitute everything that we know into this formula to see if we can get the same answer as that. So our lambda is 1.5. Our x, our x is 1, it's always in the question, e to the power negative lambda of 1.5 divide by one factor. One. So number four is our correct answer. So you need to pay attention when you answer questions, especially Poisson or binomial as well, where they can give you the formula, substituted formula or halfly calculated. They would have calculated it halfway and they ask you to, to answer the questions. Um, so you just need to pay attention to that. And this is one of those scenarios. So they just wanted to see if you know how to substitute back into the formula based on the information given. And okay. To the next question. Suppose call center agent absences are poison distributed with the mean average or the average of three, so our lambda per day, using the formula to calculate the probability that five agents are absent on a randomly chosen day. Choose the correct answer from the list. So they told us that X is five. So we need to find the probability that X is equals to five and we read from the thing it said use the formula so i'm just gonna write the formula 
I'm going to write the formula U, continue, and do it. Lambda X, I'm just going to use this way because I can see that the answer is written in this manner. Try and answer that question. If you have an answer, just let us know which letter. I think it's zero e. comma. You think is? I think it's it's E. It's option E. Option E. You think it's option E? Okay. Yes. Okay. Others? Do you agree? I, I agree with her because I got the answer as uh, 0, 0,1008. Uh -uh. You, did you simplify the E? You don't have to simplify the E. Yeah, I don't think we have to simplify the E because it looks like they only said um, the lambda to exponent X divided by um, X um, yeah. factorial only. So what is our lambda? Our lambda is 3. Our X is 5. It's 5. You can use and multiply as well since they are using multiplication everywhere multiply by e to the power of minus three divide by five factorial so what is three to the power of five two four three um it's equals to two four three that is two four three times e to the power of negative 3. What is 5 factorial? It's 120. 120. And we can, 120 can go into 243. And it goes 2.025 multiply by e to the power of 3, which is option A. Hey. So you need to be very careful when you answer the questions. Look at the options. Don't try and solve the entire question before looking at the options. What is it that they have given you? Because sometimes they will give you an option here that says none of the above, and I'm sure you're going to choose the none of the above, but there is an answer as we can see there. Suppose we know that knowledge that the number of students absent at one of the STA 1610 session are Poisson distributed with the mean of 2.5 per day. What is the probability that at least two students are absent on a random chosen day? So that is lambda we need to find the probability that x is greater than or equals to 2 
You can do this two ways. The first way is to say the probability of X is equals to two plus the probability of X is equals to three plus up until you get to, we are on 2.5, 2.5 ends at 12, up until you get to plus the probability that X is equals to 12. Or the shorter way, probability of X is greater than or equals to two is the same as one minus the probability that X is less than two which is the same as one minus the probability that x is equals to zero plus the probability that x is equals to one. Which will be the shortest way. Let's go to the table so that those who without the table can have the values. Are we using 2.5? And you will just choose the two values. Are we done? I uh, just question are we not going to include two? You can include two because this said the probability that X is equals to or greater than two. So it means this needs to go in this way will have to include two, but going to the complement, the complement cannot include two. Oh, that's okay. why I wrote it like that. I think option one, a is the correct one, 0, 0,7127. All right, so the probability that X is 0 was 0, 0,0, 0, 8, 2, 1, plus 0, 0,2052. And you just say one minus zero comma zero eight two one minus zero comma two zero five two. Let's see if your answer is right. One minus you can put it into the bracket point zero eight two one plus point zero. Uh -uh. Point two zero five two close bracket equals zero point seven one two seven as you said it. Which is option A. Yay. So you can also check it if you are not sure. You can check it by adding all these values. So at least you will add up until 10 because 11 and 12 are 0, 0. Should give you the same answer. Let X be a random variable representing the number of mistakes in a textbook. Suppose the mistakes occur at an average of two, page, uh, two per page. The probability that at most three mistakes are found on a given page is. So what our lambda is. And we are asked to find the probability. At most three will be X is less than or equals to three which is the easy one. X is equals to zero, plus the probability that X is equals to one, 
what is the probability that x is equal to 2? What is the probability that x is equal to 3? I'm going to go to lambda of 2. I'm going to give you the time to look at the table. Lambda of 2 is the top one. Let's remove the ink. So it's the last question. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The math is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Just write all the values. Are we done? Yes. Okay. What are the answers? Option one. Uh, but I need the values. Sorry. <laughs> Zero comma one three five three. And the next one is zero comma two seven zero seven. And I think the next one also is the same. The same, yes. And the last one is zero comma one eight zero four. Okay. And when we add all of them. It says zero comma eight six. Zero comma. It gives me zero comma eight six. Your calculator that oh, is zero for decimals. Zero comma. No, it's supposed to be zero comma eight five seven. Zero comma eight five, five seven. Seven. Yeah, one. Does it end there? Yes. Oh, because we're using a four decimal table. Probably they used. Um, in this tutorial letter, they would have used the four decimal values, which is option number, option one. No, I don't know why my calculator is just giving me the answers with two decimals. What calculator are you using? I'm using Sharp, a financial calculator. Okay, there we go. Uh, press setup, zero, zero, and then press four. Then your calculator will be on four decimals all the time. Okay, you said setup and then? I wrote it here. Setup, and oh, zero, oh, and, zero, then zero, zero. Oh, yeah. and then four. Oh, oh yeah. Then your calculator will be on four decimals. If you want to take it to two decimals, you just repeat the step. Set up. So step oh, yeah, step. it's giving me four decimals. Zero, zero, four, set up. Set up. Oh, zero, zero, two you. will take it to two decimals. Set up. Zero, zero, four will take it to four decimals. So, or something. There we go. So always when we do probabilities, just keep your calculator on four decimals. Actually, just keep your calculator on four decimals and round it off when you get to the answer. Okay. Let X be a random variable representing the number of mistakes in a textbook. We have done something like this, similar. The average, which is the lambda, is two per page. What is the probability that at least The probability of at least, what is at least? At least five. 
but this at greater least greater or five. equals to pardon greater or equals to no, five. at least or oh, at least what is at least did we cover at least let's go back i think we did right did we cover at least we covered exactly not at least hey so we did cover at least yeah at there is at least yes no why am i oh, okay it's sunday it's exactly not at least what am i talking about exactly that is exactly five what is exactly five equals to five it's yes, equal to it's, it's equals to okay all right so what is our lambda is two x is five so let's go to the table it should be easy and quick to answer lambda is two x is five Lambda is two, x is five. The answer is zero comma zero three six one. It's option four because my values here are in five decimals, four this dec five decimals. But that if you round it off, it will be zero comma zero three six one, which is the same as what we got from the table. Assume that X is a Poisson random variable with the average lambda of six. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? So we need to evaluate each and every one of them. What I will do going to stop presenting and bring the table close by we know that we're looking for six right so i can just scroll to where lambda is six will be at the end which is this one so i'm just gonna leave it next to on top of the presentation so it means i won't be able to write come on work with me lambda of six i'm gonna write the numbers here one oh sorry zero for you to be able to reference zero one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking for the incorrect one. So look at number one. Don't tell me the answer as yet. We will do the answers once we are done with looking at the options. We're evaluating all of them. Write the answer, the correct answer for number one. Look at number two. Number two said the variance is 2.5. Is that the variance? Remember, this is the square root of your lambda. Number three, find the probability of x less than three. Write the, the values down. Mm 
number four. It says find the probability that X is greater than five. Remember, you can do it two ways. Instead of adding from six to 17, you can add from five. Here you can add from five to one and subtract that from, from one. And then the last one, they are asking you to find the probability of between, which is number five. And remember, this is exclusive because it's just between two and five, but does not include two and five. Got it? Are we happy? Krista. Mm, okay, can I remove the table? Or are you still busy? Okay, I'll leave the table there for some time for those who are still busy. So ease of reference, I have just posted it there for us to use. Let's answer the question. We're looking for the incorrect one, right? The probability that X is equals to zero. We just go and find that probability. It is 0, 0,0025. So that is correct. The variance, remember, is just the square root. The variance will be the square root of 6, and I think we did calculate this earlier. Is that correct? Did All we right. find it as 2.45, right? Yes, it's correct. Question. Yes? No? The variance? The variance is supposed to be equal to... It's supposed to be the lambda, it costs you the lambda. Yes, you are right. Because the standard deviation is the one square root. Yes, so that will be the incorrect question, the incorrect answer. Because they're asking for the variance. And the probability of less than three, 
just for practice purposes. Less than three, therefore we need to add all these values. Excluding three, we add all the other values. So you will add 0 0.0025 plus 0 0.0149 plus 0 0.0001. Four, four, six. Add them all together, they should give you zero comma six two. Correct. Point zero zero two five plus point zero one four nine plus. 0 0.0446 equal. That's the right answer. The next one says the probability of X greater than five. This we can find it by finding one minus because there is the probability of greater than five. We can then find one minus the probability of X less than or equals to five, because that will be the complement of five, which is the same as one minus. We already have the less than three, which is those ones. So we can just add minus those ones values, which are zero comma zero six, Two, which is all of those, and then we just add the next ones plus zero comma one three one three zero comma zero comma zero eight nine two plus zero comma one three three nine plus zero comma one six zero six I'm just gonna add the rest of the other values. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Are you? Am I losing you? Are you doing it this way? Remember this zero comma. It's this values. I'm not going to repeat them here because we already calculated them there. I need to find that the probability of less than five, less than or equals to five, is zero, one, two, three, four, five. So it's all of this. In our previous question, we did less than three, which means we added all those. So the only thing I need to is to also include in the previous question that from the 0, 0.062 to add the others that are not there. Because I could replace this 0, 0.062 with all these values and then it will be a whole long number. Is that what you're going to ask me? Yeah, I'm also showing new shortcuts that you don't have to sweat a lot, but you need to pay attention when you do that. So yeah, I have. 1 minus 0, 0,4457. 1 minus 0, 0,44. What did I get? 57. Right? Then I can subtract 1 minus 0.44. F7. And the answer is 0, 0,5543.
which is the same as what we have. Which then this is correct. The last one says we need to find the value of between 2 and 5. The values that are between 2 and 5 is the probability of x is equal to 3 plus the probability that x is equal to 4, which means we just add 0, 0,0892 plus 0, 0,133339. Point zero eight nine two plus point one three three nine zero point two two three one, which is correct. Any questions? You need to practice. It requires you to practice. Even with the shortcuts, you need to practice this because then it can be confusing, especially when it comes to the signs. Because if if the sign here it says greater than, the complement of it will be one minus the less than or equal, including that number. If it so was greater than or equal. Four. I was confused Pardon? when you say 0, 0,0762. When I wrote this on on number four. Yeah, on number four, I was confused when you say uh, 0, 0,0062. So I didn't know where you got it. Oh. Sorry, I thought I explained that because we already calculated it previously, those three numbers. And I said those three numbers are those three numbers. We already calculated them and we found them it was 0, 0,062. I don't have to rewrite them. I can just write the sum of them. Oh, no, I, I got you. I got you. Thank you. That is the sum of those values. Because we needed to calculate from here to above. <clears throat> Otherwise, you can also calculate all these values going there from six downwards. So in order, instead of adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, you can just add one, two, three, four, five, six, six. And instead of adding six, because you already added the three, you just add three numbers, four numbers together. <clears throat> Okay, so we almost at the end of the session. Likewise, I do have extra questions um, included in the notes that you can go through them on your own. Uh, so here is the other question. You will notice that most of the questions are almost similar. The, the, the difference is we change like the question will change a student to John, John to Mary, Mary to Paul, Paul to a, a factory, factory to something else. But if you read carefully the question, you will notice that the questions are almost exactly the same. It's just that the, the environment changes, but your lambda will stay lambda your x will stay x, your probability and answering the exactly or greater than will stay the same for all the questions. So this is one other question that you can do on your own. They gave you the lambda of 0 0.2 and you need to just evaluate each one of them to find the correct answer. And here, number one and number two, they are equal. Number Three and number four, it's exact. It's at least so. It's greater than or equal. Uh, 
<clears throat> question 10. Using the same information from there, you can see that you need to calculate the probability of any given day that there will be no fake news, no means zero. So you can find out whether it's any of this, and if not, then use the formula to check if this is the correct one. Remember, you don't have to simplify the entire formula. You just need to substitute and simplify the numbers, except the E, uh, uh, the natural log base. Okay, and then, uh, but also you must pay attention because on the log base, it is to the power of a negative number. So there are certain things that you need to pay attention to when you are, look at the questions as well. And remember, you're looking for, uh, where is the question? You're looking for uh, the exact probability. And other questions can come to you in this manner. You just need to make sure that you understand that that is your mean average and that is your y and you calculate the same average calculate the variance uh yeah you need to calculate the probability of at least seven so it's greater than seven greater than one for 2.5 uh, at least two and that concludes today's session. So there are a couple of questions that you can still go ahead and practice with, except the ones, including, not except, including the ones that are on the uh, content and video uh, activities as part of the e-tutorial that you can use also to practice. Other than that, by the end of this session today, you have everything you need to be able to answer your assignment too with at ease. So it means if you haven't caught up with all the work, you need to go back and revise your study unit for recordings for the content and also for the activities that we did on a Sunday. You need to look at the three recordings that we have already on binomial uh, discrete probabilities binomial and today's one on Poisson, plus including also the content of videos. Now, if you haven't caught up, it means the content videos are two hour session videos. So it means it's four hours that you need to set aside. The Saturday, uh, Sunday sessions, they these are one hour, 30 minutes. So there are four videos, uh, probably five. Let me assume that there are four videos. So of the four videos that are there, so it's one and a half. One and a half makes three hours, so it's six hours. So you need to set aside 10 hours to look at the recordings thoroughly to revise in order for you to be able to go and do your assignment. And I'm saying this, pleading with you because without watching the recordings, you might struggle to do some of the easy questions that are there or are asked. So please make time before you even start your assignment to watch all the recordings. You need 10 hours to catch up to everything that we have done and then start your submission one. Remember, you will have another submission closer to the end of the, um, closer to the due date of your assignment. At least once you have done your first submission, we have one last session where we will answer question and answer based on chapter four and chapter, oh, we call it study unit, study unit four and study unit five, where you can ask any question. You can ask us to clarify certain things that you're still unfamiliar with, to help you with how to read the table if you still are struggling with your table, 
to help you with how to use your calculator to calculate either the binomial probability or to calculate the Poisson, which will be the last session that we will have a week before the closing date of your assignment. Then the following week, we're going to start with um, preparing for assignment three. So there is no time to rest. You just need to make sure that you catch up. Other than that, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. If there are no questions, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you for showing up. And thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Lizzie. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Evening. <laughs>